This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. It's been a week since the Queen sadly passed away, and already people, countries, politicians and newspapers are discussing the future of the monarchy globally. That's because the British monarchy actually holds quite a lot of influence around the world, with 56 countries making up the Commonwealth, a voluntary grouping headed by the British monarch, and a further 15 countries where the monarch is the official head of state. Even prior to the Queen's passing, this relationship was already coming under scrutiny, with politicians and countries increasingly discussing their status within the groupings, and Barbados recently becoming the 17th country to remove the Queen as their head of state. Possessing a clear sense of who we are and what we are capable of achieving in the year 2021, we now turn our vessel's bow towards the new republic. We do this so that we may seize the full substance of our sovereignty. It's possible that this trend of stepping away from the monarchy may only accelerate in the years ahead. After all, the Queen was often seen as a lovable and unifying figure who softened the monarchy. With her no longer in the equation, people are already discussing the future. So, sooner than we expected, let's discuss the future of the Commonwealth and if we can expect to see more countries ditching the King as their head of state. Let's start by discussing the Commonwealth. When Britain went through the process of decolonisation in the first half of the 20th century, it was decided that some relationship should continue to exist between Britain and its former colonies, the Commonwealth. Membership is entirely voluntary, with the Queen acting as its head. Now, being part of the Commonwealth and having the British monarch as your head of state are two different things. As we mentioned in the intro, Barbados, still a member of the Commonwealth, got rid of the Queen as their head of state in 2021. So the question now is, will more countries now pull out of the Commonwealth or remove the King as their head of state? There is actually some precedent for countries withdrawing from the Commonwealth, with Ireland becoming the first in 1948. Pakistan also left the Commonwealth in 1972 in protest at the group's recognition of Bangladesh, although they later rejoined in 1989. The only country to leave the Commonwealth out of protest of what the Commonwealth actually is was the Gambia in 2013, whose president described it as a neo-colonial institution. They rejoined in 2018, though. There haven't really been any controversial developments recently, and Charles becoming the head of the Commonwealth was agreed four years ago by the leaders of the Commonwealth nations. Today we have agreed that the next head of the Commonwealth shall be His Royal Highness Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. His Royal Highness has been a proud supporter of the Commonwealth for more than four decades and has spoken passionately about the organisation's unique diversity. A decision which, according to Theresa May, the British Prime Minister at the time, was unanimous. If a country had an issue with Charles, they likely would have raised this in 2018. They may have stayed as part of the Commonwealth as a mark of respect to the Queen, and then left upon her death. However, if May is to be believed, then no country had an issue with Charles in the first place. Even in addition to this, the Commonwealth isn't a hugely controversial grouping anyway. Membership is voluntary, and it doesn't have a budget, nor does it make any policy decisions. It's more of a forum for diplomacy, where leaders discuss matters of mutual interest. So it's likely that very little is going to change from the perspective of the Commonwealth. But what about the Queen as head of state? The three countries that are looking the most likely to want to get rid of the British monarch next are Jamaica, Australia and New Zealand. Earlier this year, Jamaica stated their intention of removing the Queen as the head of state, with their Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs saying the continued symbolic presence of the British Crown in the constitutional makeup of our state and other Commonwealth Caribbean states has been repeatedly placed on reform agendas here and across the region, and laying out a rough plan for how removing the monarchy may work. It's not just the government. 55% of Jamaicans also support removing the Queen. That's likely to rise too, as some in Jamaica may feel some deference towards the Queen, due to her long time on the throne. With Charles as king, this feeling of loyalty probably isn't as strong, only making the move to a republic more likely. 
Australia, unlike Jamaica, has no official plans as of yet to remove the British monarch as their head of state. Back in 1999, they had a referendum on this very issue and decided against getting rid of the then Queen as their head of state. However, it was very close, with only 55% backing the monarchy. Now, their current Prime Minister previously made plans to hold another referendum after the Australian elections in May, but seems to have slightly changed his tune, now indicating that he would not pursue a referendum during his first term in office. That, though, doesn't mean never. As with Australia, Canada and New Zealand have not explicitly made any concrete plans for replacing the monarchy. But there have been some suggestions lately that the country could at some point try and separate from the monarchy. Jacinda Ardern, the country's Prime Minister, has claimed that she believes that New Zealand will become a republic in her lifetime. There's been a, a, a debate probably for a, a number of years. Uh, it's just the pace and uh, uh, how widely uh, that debate is occurring. I, I've made my view plain many times. Uh, I do believe that is where New Zealand um, uh, will head in time. I believe it's likely to occur in my lifetime, uh, but I don't see it as a short-term uh, measure or anything that is, that is on the agenda any time soon. So it seems that while the Commonwealth will remain pretty much the same, Jamaica is likely to get rid of the monarchy very soon, and New Zealand and Australia are certainly weighing up their options. If you can't wait for more TLDR to find out, then you can find more exclusive TLDR content exclusively on Nebula. That's the streaming service that we built with our creator friends, and we can find a bunch of TLDR videos which will never make it to YouTube. But you can also find a ton of our other videos there ad-free, and get some of our videos early before anyone else. Signing up also really helps the channel, and helps us make more content not just for Nebula subscribers, but for everyone else too. So if you want more from us and support the channel, then you can get access to Nebula for less than $15 a year with the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Let me explain. We've partnered with the superb streaming service Curiosity Stream, where you can find a bunch of great documentaries about all kinds of fascinating topics. Now, if you sign up to their service today using our link, then you'll get Nebula included absolutely free. That's both streaming services for less than a dollar a month. A crazy good deal to get all of these documentaries on CuriosityStream and more from TLDR on Nebula. If you're interested, then the link is in the description. And thanks so much for your support.